Hello everybody, this is Hank. Uh, today I'm back and we are going to talk about the R6 uh, back button focus and how to set it up. Actually today I'm going to talk about double back button focus meaning that we are using not one but two back buttons to do what we want to do and I will try to number one show you how to do it, number two to explain to you why uh, what's in there you would be needing something like this, okay, and then leave it up to you whether or not you want to use it. Okay, so first of all, uh, the typical uh, shooting environment. Now, the double back button focus you can use for any kind of photography, but but I think the the most kind of photography that benefit the most out of it would be uh, action shooting especially in birds in flight and stuff like that okay so that's why today I got a couple of examples for for birds in flight and that kind of thing instead of pictures of people that I normally do okay so just to explain to you um, by default the R6 as well as any cameras out there uh, at least for Canon and I think it applicable to all cameras but Canon especially it's like when you press the shutter button halfway okay this thing focus for you alright and then you press fully and then it takes a picture that's a default okay but most people don't realize that here I'm I'm showing you a picture of the back of the R6. Okay. Now there's two buttons that I highlighted in yellow. Now the the highlighted one on the left is label AF dash on. Okay, that button by default. Okay, when you press it, it does two two things. Okay, it meter and it autofocus for you. So that, if you haven't realized it, that's exactly what happened when you press the shutter button halfway. Okay, it meters, it autofocuses. All right. So to sum it up, by default, Canon cameras, the shutter button pressing halfway and the AF on button works identical and and they will take turn okay so you can use them without having to program anything okay so the back button focus that when people talk about okay you don't really have to do anything uh, at least with the back button focus itself you don't have to do anything however you think about it if you keep the shutter button pressing halfway as an autofocus, it will mess you up because the, the back button focus achieves the focus that you want. And then when you go and take a picture of it, guess what? Because you have to press it halfway first before you can press it fully, it will refocus on you and ruin your shot. Okay, so, so you, even though both of them work at the same time today, but nobody will press both of them at the same time. So the key thing is that we are going to have to disable the front button so that it will only take the picture and it will not autofocus. It will also meters, but it, it, it meters, it takes the picture, but it won't autofocus on you. So. So that's number one to do back button focus you need to disable the front and I'll show you how to do that okay so now it comes back to the back now we're looking at two buttons so why two buttons okay the the back button focus um, when you press it it focus okay and if you let it go right especially if you shoot one shot you let it go the focus stays there because nothing will do it now once you disable the shutter button as a auto focus the focus stays there so that is a huge advantage uh, even for taking pictures of people right portrait picture sometimes the people 
you want the people to be a little bit off to the left or to the right and you don't really want the, the subject to be square in the middle and in that case you know um, once you focus and let it go it'll just th the focus doesn't change so you can recompose without having to hold down the shutter button halfway or, or, or anything you know to take a picture so it's easier but but in the action shooting uh, it it is really easy to make a mistake when you're trying to focus and instead of focusing you press it too hard the shutter button and then it takes a picture before focus is achieved and the timing is so critical sometimes that once you accidentally press it then you lose a moment and a lot of people have been losing a lot of shots um, due to misfire because you get too excited um, it happens to the best of the people. So um, you will learn very quickly if you take pictures of birds in flight that um, you want back button focus. Okay, so if you use a single back button focus after you disable the shutter button as an autofocus device, you don't have to do anything more. Okay, however, today we are going to, to explore uh, what they call double double back button focus which means you're using two instead of one okay so I will try to tell you the why I hope I'm successful I I'm not the best explainer out there um, some of the times okay so in my scenario here okay what I'm doing is I don't know if you know this, and if you don't, this is very important. It's like the Canon R6, okay, has the capability to track faces and eyes, okay, including faces and eyes of animals, namely birds, birds, dogs, and cats. So those are the three that it is programmed to recognize. Okay, so in order for you to to track the the face, okay, you have to be either in face plus tracking or one of the three, what they call zone AF, okay, uh, which is the three to the right uh, in the choice, okay. What I'm talking about uh, are these here, okay, the three in the right and the face plus tracking. Those are the four modes that the R6 in the R6 that would track the face. Now, if you want to track the eye, the only functional mode is the face plus tracking. So, and you know, it tracks very well most of the time, so that's why you want to set it to face plus tracking by default. Okay, and, and now you're probably guessing. The reason we need a second button is for the case when that doesn't work very well. What do you do? Right? You don't really want to lose a moment. So what do you do? So we are using a second button to do the other thing when the face and the eye tracking fails. Alright? So keep that in mind. So for example now I hear this hummingbird coming to feed. Okay, and I already got face plus tracking and servo because this is action shooting, right? So, so I press the focus button. Okay, bam, because it recognized the the bird's eye, it focus on it, and you home free. Once it focus on it, you just press the shutter button all the way and take as many pictures as you can. Okay. Well, in order for it to do the 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 um, the, the the face, uh, actually the eye tracking. Okay, you you need to be doing a little bit. Um, of course, you could do it. Um, like say, if I press the Q button. Okay, a and you see that. AF method is set info enable. So if it's disabled there, you can press the info to enable it. I already got it enabled. So that's one way to do it. 
the other way is to go to the menu okay and you make sure eye detection here is enabled that's pretty important and because we're taking pictures of bird we change to animal here okay if, if you have it on people then there's a good chance that you won't recognize the animals which is bird in this case all right so okay so in this scenario is easy don't have to do anything it detect the eye you home free right okay let me kind of show you I don't remember if I mentioned it but when you are tracking animals the R6 only recognized three kinds of animals cats dogs and birds and not every single bird out there either so that's why it is critical that you got to have a plan B because if it doesn't track for example in this case here I press a button okay it focuses on the flower it doesn't recognize a bur butterfly butterfly is kind of insect animal but it's not because it's only programmed to do birds it doesn't recognize it so now now you got to do something right you you could either like press a button uh, on the butterfly's eye and hope for the best but when you do that it takes time and butterflies already flew away uh, in many scenarios you only have like a second to do the whole thing and uh, you snooze you lose right so very critical you gotta do something different so the idea to do it I on my camera is I already set it up so I already programmed the star button to do the to do the backup for me okay so basically when I press it okay it switch over to the try and true mode okay so now I can move the camera and I track the butterfly the try and true method which is using like a, a center point with eight assists which is a favorite for many people myself included for action shooting birds in flight and stuff like that and we can program this to be an AI servo and it gives you the option you can also program it for a certain case you know the servo case so I happen to, to program this to be case 2 that's my favorite because once I track the target I don't want to lose the target keep tracking the same target and doesn't switch to the other one so case 2 does that okay uh, in the previous video that I had called the R6 AF options uh, it talks about that at length okay so basically when I wanted to go, go back to the um, the face tracking method okay for example if I, I go to a different um, picture and go back to this picture and all I have to do is press the F on button it grab the eye immediately right when I do the star button okay it switch over to the center point you see the difference okay so basically you can do that immediately and of course you could program it to do like a spot uh, focus if you want to I just happen to like the eight point focus okay so so that is what they call a double back button focus okay and of course the choice is yours and now I'm going to show you on how to set it up right so hopefully I have already convinced you that hey there's something to the double uh, back button focus and you focus it here or you focus it here just like that boom 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 so I can switch it instantly by pressing a different uh, button okay two button on the back right next to each other I just press it all day switch back and forth back and forth really fast without having to do anything Okay, so now how to set it up. Okay, so first you go to that and you use the uh, multi-purpose uh, uh, dial there, uh, which is the round dial just above the F on and the 
the star button and you just turn it to get to the orange tab. Okay, orange is where you do all of the customizing. And then uh, use the um, joystick to move over to customize button. That is basically what you want. Now I already have it set up so it's a little bit different but okay so the first thing remember we talked about like um, we need to disable the shutter button as a focusing device so you want to disable that okay so that would be happen to be the very first choice okay so you just press the set button okay the default is metering an AF start that is basically the default okay so what you want to do is to press the set button and move it to metering that's all you have to do so now you have disable the shutter button as the focus device so it doesn't focus anymore that's all you have to do okay and then the AF on button, as I mentioned, you don't have to do anything. The default is already metering an AF start, which is, which was exactly the same as the shutter button pressing halfway, right? Okay. So now, pay attention to the one below, the lower left. Okay, it said info detail set. When you press the info button, it allows you to tweak the way the focusing button works. Okay, so you can specify basically AF operation, what operation you want to do, AF method, what you want to do, what server or AF characteristics, what case, case one, two, three, four, case A. Those are the the options you can do. Now for the AF on button we're gonna just leave it alone, meaning default. Okay. So whatever you set uh, with your mode is going to be using it uh, without modification. Okay, we are going to modify it uh, for the other button. Okay, so the other button is the star button. So I mentioned, um, I would have to try to find it. This thing got a lot of different choices. And I always kind of struggle to find the oops sorry uh, back okay the default is a star button oh yeah this is a default I want to show you a default so the default star button does a star which is a lock as you can tell a lock button okay so now we are going to change it to the IAF no no the the normal AF not this one uh. This one, people, sorry, it took me a while to look for it. Okay, so I don't know if you noticed, this AF is exactly the same as the AF on button AF right now. Okay? Uh, it, it, when you done it for the first time, it's exactly the same. However, notice the info detail set. Okay, I already kind of programmed it, but I'll I'll show you what what it looked like by default. By default, it looks like this, meaning that nothing is set. And and of course, if you don't set anything, and then why bother having two identical back button focus, right? So the idea here is that in the AF operation, right? 
what do you want? One shot or silver? So you can change between one shot and silver depending on your style of shooting. In my case, I'm just interested in switching the AF method and not the operation. So I'll I'll stay silver here. Okay. Okay. AF method. Of course, I don't want before. Normally, I just use face plus tracking. So here I'm switching over, and of course you have a choice of fit, switching to anything you want here. So so I just happen to choose this, but you don't have to. You get the idea. Okay, so AF characteristic is the cases, right? So you have case one, case two, case three, case four, case eight, right? So as I mentioned, I just like case two, and I I occasionally will use case three. Um, <clears throat> but two is my favorite. But you know your mileage may vary. Okay, so I I get all of that. Okay, and basically that's all you have to do. Everything is set up now, right? When you change your mind, you can go in here and change it. And if you want multiple series of combinations of changes, and then you can set it up, save it to C1, C2, C3, and then go change it again and save it somewhere else, and they'll remember all of that. However, I don't recommend that because you're going to forget what you have. I tried many fancy uh, options, and then I ended up not remembering all of them. So I kind of wasted um, a lot of time. Just keep it simple. Uh, do basically just one setup like I do, and um, and be happy with it. Okay, so so that's basically all you have to do. Okay, um, just to review, the first thing you do is to make sure the shutter button half press only does metering, and not and not the whole thing. Okay, that's the first thing. This one. Just leave it as default, and you might want to go in there and make sure that it is default, right? And press the info and make sure you don't set anything. Here you can set it here too, but but um, you don't really have to. But you could always set that here. All right. And then the third one is to go in here, and you don't have to choose this button. It just happened to be a very convenient button to use. So change this to mirroring an AF start. Okay, so that in a nutshell is the double back button focus setup that a lot of people are talking about. And of course everybody does it a little bit differently. I have showed you mine uh, because I I basically take pictures of moving things and if the face and eye tracking fails me and I switch over to the try and true method of you know uh, center point with eight surrounding uh, to track birds with this is go back to the way that I used to do it for many years with the Canon DSLR that had no face tracking you know except for the live view which AF is like completely useless as you remember so um so that's all um I have to tell you about. Hopefully you'll find that useful. Remember now, okay, I press the F on button and it tracked the eye. Press the star button, it switch over to a S program very quickly and I can just switch back and forth. You can program two of them uh, any way you like, depending on your style of shooting. Okay? Hopefully that's of help. If you like it, please give me a like. If you haven't subscribed, give me a subscription. I much appreciate it. Thank you.